Hey everybody, I've got a video here for you today. Now I think this is something that needs to be talked about, and I've talked about this before, an Atlantis and Egypt connection. Uh, it's been a theory of many people that the survivors of Atlantis went to Egypt and started that civilization. And I've had a few questions saying, is there any concrete proof of this? And uh, is there anything from Egyptian texts that tell us this? And there is, and there's a place called the Temple of Edfu, and this is the late Philip Coppins website. Now I think this is something that needs to be talked about, all these uh, findings, discoveries of the past couple decades of these underwater sites that were obviously flooded at the end of the last ice age about 10, 12,000 years ago during this cataclysmic time on Earth. Um, this is pretty much proof that there was a civilization existing at that time period. So for anybody to say that Atlantis didn't exist or what we call Atlantis didn't exist is kind of ridiculous. There's been too many findings that say otherwise. And, uh, you know, Gobekli Tepe also proof of a civilization of sophistication existing 12,000 years ago. But uh, the Temple at Edfu, and this is the late Philip Coppins website. I think he does some did some fine work. Passed away, I think, about a year and a half ago. Didn't agree with everything he said, but I like reading what he wrote about ancient sites. And he goes over to the history of the Temple of Edfu here. What we see today was completed about 2,200 years ago in the Greco-Roman time of Egyptian history. And But the very first Temple at Edfu was done by Imhotep, and he was the architect of what they say is the very first pyramid in Egypt, the Step Pyramid of Saqqara for King Djoser. But I think the Great Pyramid was always there, and I think the t uh, building texts at Edfu actually tell us that the Great Pyramid was built in this time, about 10, 12,000 years ago. And I just want to go down here. He also talks about Solomon's Temple and how the design of it was taken from these temples in Egypt. There is no archaeological evidence that the Temple of Solomon ever existed, but we have all these temples in Egypt of similar design. But it says, for researchers of lost civilizations, however, it is not the Temple of Solomon that intrigues them, but the so-called Edfu building text. The Edfu building texts speak of the first time, or Zeptepi, which was the period of the first stirring of the high god in the primeval waters to the setting of Horus upon the throne and the redemption of Osiris by Horus. And, you know, Egyptologists they got to relate everything in Egypt to Egyptian dynastic history. They will ignore anything that even hints at a history prior to the first dynasty about 5,000 years ago. And it says, the Edfu building texts, they also relate that the region of Edfu was once inhabited by the so-called Shemsu Hor, or the followers of Horus. In Manitho's list of kings, these beings ruled after the gods themselves, but before the pharaohs. And these list of kings, you may be familiar with the Palermo Stone or the Turin Papyrus that has these list of kings of Egypt where the history goes back maybe 20, 30,000 years, some have interpreted. And, uh, you know, Egyptologists will totally ignore this, though they use the very same text to put together their chronological order of dynastic Egypt. Prior to the first dynasty, on the very same piece of text, they will ignore, but they will start looking at the first dynasty and on to form their chronological order. I think that is so screwed up. It says, these beings ruled after the gods themselves, but before the pharaohs. And the time when the gods ruled themselves, I believe this is referring to the very beginning of those kings list. Some have translated as many 20 to 30,000 years ago but before the pharaohs they ruled. So I believe the Shemsu Hor, they ruled about 10, 12,000 years ago, this time of Septepi. It says, these pre-dynastic people that are said to have created the design for the Edfu and Dendera temple complexes, as they were said to have been built according to a plan written in ancient writing upon a goatskin scroll from the time of the companions of Horus. Specifically, Edfu was built according with a plan dropped down from heaven to earth near the city of Memphis. And that term dropped down from heaven to earth, that just reflects that the pyramids were, you know, said to be built in star patterns, especially the ones on the Giza Plateau, 
representing Orion's belt? It says, with such ingredients, no wonder that aficionados of the lost civilizations have been immersed in them for decades. And then it goes over some of the names of the text, and one of these names of the text was the specifications of the mounds of the primeval age. And I will talk about that in a second. But it says, some feel it should be identified with the lost continent of Atlantis, and that is this homeland. One of the books or titles is called The Island of the Egg, and some people say that should be, you know, associated with Atlantis, and I think that is right on. It says, from the text, it is clear that this homeland was destroyed with the only, with the only sole object surviving, a jed pillar, which is a pillar symbolizing the backbone of Osiris. And I think that's very interesting that these uh, Edfu building texts mention the only thing surviving from Atlantis was the jed pillar. And it says here uh, that the Dendera temple was also very ancient, or the foundations of it were very ancient. And the Dendera Temple is, of course, where we have this light bulb. And here we see the Jed Pillar holding up this light bulb. And what I think this represents is the only thing surviving from Atlantis being the Jed Pillar holding up this light. This was a technology that we just do not get today. This was a power source from Atlantis that relied on the Earth's own power, free energy, something we just do not get today for many reasons. And I think that is what this symbolizes. And why do I think this is a power source and a light? Well, the texts from that wall actually talk about he lights up its house in the night of the child in his nest. And by, no, by donating the light to the country from the birth bricks. And that is the actual text from the wall at Dendera. It says, the land of autumn is prepared with his most distinguished plan, and who and Saya are subordinated to him. He may protect the son of Ra forever. And here on the wall at Tendera, it also talks about a distinguished plan, just like the Edfu building texts do. And I believe that was the original plans of the pyramids at Giza. Now, let me, and possibly other pyramids that were put down around Giza in the Cairo area. Um, I've, there has been some theories that say that whole area is laid out in a giant star map. But I want to go over to this. This is from a book called Sacred Earth. It's written by Martin Gray with help of Graham Hancock. And I just want to read what they say in here. It says, the fragments of this lost mythical history preserved in the Edfu building text contain intriguing references to a remote epoch, the prime, early primeval age, when a mysterious group of beings called the Builder Gods were believed to have settled in Egypt. And the Builder Gods are also called the Sages, and I believe these are the survivors of Atlantis that also went to uh, places, uh, you know, near India. The seven rays of light they are called to Sumer. You know, they're called the seven Anunnaki gods. I believe these are, it's all the same story. And when they brought civilization to these places, it just evolved in different places differently. But the original source of them was always these original survivors. And in Egypt, they're called sages or builder gods. They are called different things in different areas. But I think they all came from one place. And the similarity to mythology in different areas, and especially Mesoamerica and the Mayans, I think it is because it all comes from one source. These refugees from Atlantis, or Atlantis is the most familiar name we call it, it says, it seems that their former homeland had been destroyed in a flood, so they were refugees, these builder gods, and were told that the first thing they did once they arrived in Egypt was build sacred mounds at various latitudes along the Nile, among them the Great Primeval Mound, associated by many, many scholars with the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I think that is right on. These primordial mounds and one of them was called the Great Primeval Mound, and they were built at specific latitudes along the Nile. There isn't a better description of the Great Pyramid anywhere, I don't think. And it says here, 
It is highly relevant to the theme of Martin Gray's present work that these mounds, great and small, with which the builder gods busy themselves were explicitly created to serve the foundation of all future temples to be built in Egypt. There is even a reference in the Edfu building text to a lost book called The Specifications of the Mounds of the Primeval Age. So there is a sense that this was an organized and systematic project, and indeed we learn that the development of primeval mounds into temples and pyramids was intended to bring about nothing less than the resurrection of the former world of the gods. But why would the builder gods have chosen one location over another, this place rather than that, in deciding where to site their mounds, and why was it so important? Or let me repeat that. And why was so much importance given to the task of surveying and setting out these mounds at all in a superb photo pilgrimage taking us to the many ancient sacred sites all around the world martin has put his finger and his camera on the answers to these questions true sacred sites as opposed to whited sepulchers are sacred not because men have said they are so and not even because of the majesty of the architecture that may adorn them but purely and simply because of the uncanny energetic powers of the places on which they stand it also seems to be the case that these uncanny powers wax and wane with the seasons rising in strength in certain special times of the year and dying down at others it is here that the astronomical alignments of temples and pyramids come into play telling us by their orientation when we may expect to find them at their most potent when the gods who animate them return to walk among us so i thought that was well written pretty interesting but uh it talks of the great primeval mound at the time of the rulers of the followers of horus and i believe that refers to 10 12 000 years ago i think this is proof that the Egyptologists won't even, you know, acknowledge or won't even begin to look at. This is proof that, uh, you know, Egypt, the sites at Egypt were set down in a much earlier age than the first dynasty of Egypt. I will leave links for uh, Philip Coppin's article here below and for this book written by Martin Gray called The Sacred Earth, Places of Power, Places of Peace and Power excuse me, and uh, I'll leave a link for the Dendera light bulb. I believe this only surviving thing from Atlantis. I believe this is the story told of the D Dendera light bulb. The original temples at Dendera and Edfu were built a long, long time ago. They were one of these original places of power. It all uh, you know, kind of comes together with the story of Atlantis and the survivors coming to Egypt. Hope you thought this was interesting. Yeah, nice day.